growing up, I was born in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, my dad led my life pretty much as soon as I was born. So my mom moved up to Wheeling, West Virginia. Uh, we lived with my grandma. She got into a relationship with my stepdad, Matthew Benson. Uh, they got married when I was young. They were together until I was probably in about fourth or fifth grade. They got separated, divorced. Uh, I had a decent childhood. Um, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, was around family. Didn't, I didn't really need for anything most of my childhood. Um, when I got up into high school, started playing a lot of basketball, and I met, started hanging out with the wrong crowd, and things went down, got rougher, and you know, me and my mom got in some physical altercations, and it was that was hard for me. Um, but a lot of it was in my own doing, and through work in recovery, I've been able to forgive her for what what I felt in the past that I held against her, and she did wrong. I've been able to forgive her through working the, the twelve steps and through God. I've been able to forgive her, uh, and you know, I went to a juvenile home when I was sixteen years old until I was eighteen years old. And when I got out of juvenile, that's when I really started going really hard in the drug scene. So that's, that's most of my childhood. Was you brought up in church at all? When I was growing up, I actually went to a Catholic school, uh, St. Michael's. And in, in high school, I went to the Catholic school as well, Central Catholic High School. And I grew up in Catholic, mom's Catholic. Grandma's Catholic, went to church, I, I altar served, all that type of stuff. But okay. I always think, like, as a kid, I felt like I didn't fit in with anybody. And I was I always felt less than other people. Like I wasn't as good as this group. I wasn't good enough at basketball, so I couldn't hang out with them. I wasn't good enough to be with the smart kids. I didn't make good enough grades. So I never felt like I fit in anywhere. And that's when I started using, fit in and be accepted. And I was already around the wrong people. First thing I done was marijuana and alcohol. Yeah. I remember the first time that I smoked. I felt like no worry. I just felt like that's how I wanted to feel all the time from the first time. From the first time? Yeah, I, that's how I wanted to feel all the time. And I didn't have the money to support that at that time, but you know, I, I manipulated right from the start. Like, would say, hey, I need to go to the movies. Can I get $20? $20 right from the first time I ever smoked weed. Mm -hmm. I, I was manipulating to get it. So, I mean, that's an addictive behavior. And I was hooked from the first time, I think. I just, it's what other people was doing, so I thought it was normal. Uh, one time, I had called Recovery Point after I had been doing some stuff that was harder, and just hated it because I couldn't sleep, and I didn't like not being up. Come down and and I called Recovery Point right after I, and I was like, "Well, I can just smoke weed, and I'll go like a week, and then I would go back to the hard stuff, and I'll be like, cycle." And I called Recovery Point. I was like, I'm tired. Just going to Recovery Point. I guess that's the closest I came to trying to put on my own. But I didn't last at Recovery Point. I wasn't. I wasn't really truly convinced that I was a true alcoholic. Like the Big Book says, like I wasn't there yet. I didn't want to give up smoking pot. I've been to four different rehabs, including Lotus which is a rehab I had done before I came to the Rock. A year in next month. Next yeah. month, a year. Coming, when I first came to the Rock, I didn't really know what to expect. I just knew that I wanted something better for my life. I was tired of, 
I was tired, man. I was tired of living the wrong way. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to make a change. And I was willing to give up what I hadn't been willing to give up in the past, which was smoking weed. I was willing to give that up. And then when I started to have a relationship with God, that's what really took me on to the next level. Deeper, like what was I doing? And how did I react to certain scenarios that made me want to use in the first place? The problem wasn't with the substance the whole time, it was with me. And I started to see how out of line I've been my whole life with all of these choices I've made with God's will. And that's the root cause of why I wasn't happy and why I started using. Hmm. I was like, I've been hospitalized in jail and juvenile. And I, when I was 16, I got in an argument with my mom and I broke a couch in her house. She called the law on me. I got put on probation and I, they drug test me every week and I thought I could get by it by just drinking alcohol. And then I was like, man, this alcohol is like not good. And I was taking other stuff because it would go out of your system quicker. So I was like, I'm gonna go back to smoking pot. And then I did that, I got caught with so many probation violations. And then they sent me to juvenile for two years. And while I was in there, I actually tried to commit suicide. And I was hospitalized for that while I was in there. And I've been, after that, hospitalized once from an overdose, then in jail once, then hospitalized again, and in jail again. After I graduate, my goal is to become an art therapist because I love making art and I want to help people. And listen here, guys. He talking about really good at art. This guy really is good at art. I, uh, he's he's done some pretty amazing drawings. Been trying to uh, talk him into doing some research with the 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 angels, demons in the Bible, and draw some of them. And uh, still waiting on that. But we'll, we'll see it someday. I'm sure. Yeah. There was this uh, program we had to go to called Art Art Two O is called it like and I I draw, drawing was what I used to cope while I was in juvenile like the whole time. And uh is that's when I really started to get into when I was in juvenile detention is like so we went to this Art 2 program and also my mom, she's that that's her job, she's an art therapist as well. Uh, we went to this Art 2 program and this guy's like teaching us how to draw and stuff, but he's like, I don't want you guys to erase anything you draw. And you can like try to cover it up or make it into something prettier. But he said it's because that's how life is. You can't erase your mistakes, but you can turn them into something beautiful. I was like, oh, wow. I want to be able to help people like that. When I'm you can't erase life in any of our situations. But the scripture says that he can take those things that are meant for evil and turn and for good. good. Yeah. And and I, I believe that's what we're seeing when you're talking about uh, don't erase anything. Just turn it in and take those things and make something amazing out of it. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I want to go to school around here somewhere maybe Marshall or something and stay around this area, start pushing harder and maybe see like, if you if you really want this, you, you gotta go get it, man. You can't just ride the coattails of other guys to do the next right thing. No. 21 years old. 20, at 21 years old, most of America are out chasing the wildlife. And here you are in a sober living home about to graduate you're talking about going back to school. You're getting your license. Working on it. Work, 